Hi everyone, it's Ian from DIY Home and Gardening. We're coming up for the middle of November now, and uh, if you haven't done so already, then you should be thinking about lifting and storing some of those more tender uh, bulbs and perennials. And one of those in question is this one behind me, uh, which are begonia. Hopefully you'll recognise these plants, although they were looking in uh, better condition from previous videos. So these are my summer flowering begonia that have been going all summer long since I planted them. They are the corn type as opposed to seed raised ones. And like I said before, we are now coming up for the middle of November. So they are going into natural die off mode. Uh, within the UK, um, obviously they, they go into dieback mode, same as everywhere else, uh, but it is too cold and too wet over our winter period to keep your begonias outside all the time. So um, how do we look after them, how do we store them and uh, what have we done to get to this point? So in order to get to this point, uh, literally once I got to about the October period moved them from being out on the patio to a little undercover bit that I've got which keeps them cool keeps them going but it does mean that um, whilst the cold can get to them you're not going to get too much wet in that crown which is this bit here and you can allow the plant to just start drying out and going into their sort of autumn winter dormancy. Now you do want to allow them to dry naturally and by drying naturally and dying back they will pull the nutrients out of the plant itself, out of the stem and it will go into this corm here. So um, yeah, that will give you better results for next year. Equally, by giving them that little bit of shelter, then they're not going to get impacted by uh, potential frost. So, that's, um, that's kind of the lead up. Now, where do we go from here? So, Some people would leave them to die back, leave them in their pots, and fingers crossed, hope for the best, and that the plants start growing again next year. Um, that's a little bit yeah it's a little bit naive because uh, well you never quite know how they're going to perform over winter so first things first is you want to scoop off some of this old leaf matter and stem matter and just have a little look and like I say you can see that the compost has been drying out but what you can't see below or potentially below is uh, uh, a grub of a vine weevil and vine weevil is a, a little black beetle and what they do is they tend to harbour underneath the rims of the pots they get into the compost they lay their eggs in the compost and from those eggs you end up with a small creamy white grub with brown head lives in the soil and it doesn't go for these stems, it doesn't go for the leaves, in fact it goes through the roots and it'll go through the um, corms. So that is the reason for lifting them predominantly. So you're protecting them from the, the cold and the winter issues but also from possible pest issues. So let me just uh, set the camera up properly and then We'll uh, take these out of the pot and have a little look. Just do one at a time, make it easy. So you want to get to a point where when you bend the stem, they easily snap out or just fall away. And like I say, for the most part, we've allowed them to fall away by themselves. Now, actually, this is a good example. See on this one, this one has already got rotten it's no good so if you if we left this in there and you can feel well I can feel it's cold actually so if I'd left this in the pot all over winter then potentially that could have spread through to these other ones so what do we want to do we now want to get these out of the pot themselves so nothing too technical 
just tip them out. You can hear some of that drainage. And all I'll do now is I'll just scoop some of this uh, some of this drainage material back into the base of the pot and then we can just concentrate on the compost itself. So I've got another bucket in there, chucked all the plant material in there. We've got stones in there so they can also come out of the way for the time being and we're just left with the compost. So what we're doing, we we'll just pull it apart, just having a, a look out for any possible pests or grubs and tend to work from the base so then you can actually have a, a look and I won't keep any of this compost anyway uh, this will end up getting spread around the, the garden you don't want to use any of this so just want to be a little bit ruthless you can hear that little crunching sound as you're pulling away some of the old root as you get close to the corn there just be careful because you don't want to damage the actual outer layer of that and you're just taking off the bits that come off easily until you're left with that. Now that has still got plenty of root on it which really we don't want to keep but you can see that it's still wet and if you try and scrape it off whilst it's wet you'll do damage to the corn itself so for the time being, let's trust the newspaper, picture of the Queen on there, look. So for the time being, um, let's uh, lay this out. All I'm going to do is, as I prepare these, just stick them on the newspaper and they can stay indoors for a week or two. A week or two and as they once they're dry we can then put them we can then put them away into a, a nice container so let me get the other one done and then i'll show you where we're at oh and what i should say is that instead of storing them that way up so they're sitting down turn them that way one you'll get the excess moisture will drain out from the crown and also you'll get the moisture to the roots that way. Um, not moisture, the dryness, the dry air to the roots, um, which will help carry on drying those out, which is what you want. So just uh, leave them a couple of weeks and then um, they should be dry enough. I'll see you soon. Right, everyone, we're back. A couple of weeks near enough gone past and you can see these are looking a lot drier. So already I've cleaned up the outer sections. Um, you'll notice, and so the re well, hopefully you might be able to notice, or hopefully not. The reason why we clean these up is a couple of little holes there, uh, which I think have been from worm. Um, oh, drop that little section. Uh, actually, from this piece here, once it was dried out, enabled me to cut out bit more of the shoot or the old shoot and you can see that's got some nibbling um, it became apparent that actually one of the other tubers needed chucking away because that had some beetles don't know what they were living in them so just thought I'd show you on this final one so just again just using your fingers or your thumb and you're just going to lightly lift away this bit and you, you can probably just see these small fibrous hairs that remain and so you're not putting any force with it you're just trying to clean it up and below all of this it is still 
a little bit on the damp side but you're just using fingers or thumb to clean it up just to rub off the worst of it and any of these slightly longer roots just pull those off just so you're making sure that you're going to get rid of anything that is potentially going to break down decompose um, which is what will then cause the, the bulb itself or the corm to rot so just working away over It's not one of those jobs where if you want to keep your fingers clean, it's uh, it's not a job for them, keeping them clean. So. Just work your way over the whole section. Get as much of the old matter off as possible. Right, so that's the underside done. And actually, now we've taken it off, you can see there's a section there that's been chewed at some point. Now for this middle bit. And with this, you can't really get your fingers in, so I do tend to use a bit of a sharp knife, um, but not facing inwards, uh, um, outwards, sorry. I face it towards the center and I just use the top again, lightly scrape away any of this old fibrous stuff. So I work away around the edges. And you probably will notice. So there, there are some tiny shoots which where the bulb's already trying to sprout but we want to just clean it up as much as possible let it get into its dormancy phase so just work your way around the edge and then where you've got these shoots through the middle or what were the shoots Again, just use the tip of your knife to to clean up so again you're getting rid of any of the old matter that might decay it just gives you a nice bit of separation around the stems so that they're not touching each other uh, which again could cause them to rot that bit there again just lightly use your knife scoop out any stuff that might break down and pretty happy with that so we've now got four really good corms unfortunately oh, sorry, I did think that I'd have five but um, we've only got the four and they now are at a stage and actually you can see how much rubbish has come off just those four and that's why it's important to just give it that couple of weeks to dry out just get a piece of newspaper and wrap them up and by wrapping them up you'll just allow the or well one you're protecting them but the newspaper will then just help soak up any excess moisture that comes out of that core and you got your little sections there and just want to put them into a container so put them into an ice cream container something like that and make sure you write what's in the container on it and um, essentially that's what you're going to be storing over the winter period so uh, 
Job done. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you found it of interest. Certainly if you've got any questions, not sure about anything, just uh, send me a message. I'll do my best to answer the question for you. Uh, please keep subscribing if you like what I'm doing and don't forget to hit that reminder button so you don't miss out on the future videos. Always say it, but you know, just get out, enjoy your gardening or uh, if you're not enjoying it, then uh, think about enjoying it in the springtime and do some preparation. But uh, yeah, till next time, mind there you go. See you soon.